So you're going to see the next slide actually has a pretty good series of figures to kind of talk you through this, but I want to I want you to think about a closed system and for me it's what's kind of handy in the lab is a beaker. Here's my beaker. I'm going to put some water at the bottom. There's my liquid water, okay? And I'm going to put somehow kind of seal up my beaker. And if you've ever had a terrarium, you know that basically you water the plant, or you water the, you put water in your system, and then that water kind of has its own little hydrological cycle where, and I'll go ahead and show this in my beaker, um, some of, um, depending upon the temperature of your terrarium or the temperature of my system that has a, a beaker with liquid in it and it's covered, I am going to have some of this, this water down here is going to go ahead and fill well, not fill, but I don't know if you can see those. Those are my little gas particles. I'm going to put G for gas up here. And I kind of call this the headspace above the liquid. So basically, we call that what? Liquid go to a gas, we call that evaporation. And I'm going to kind of put a little up arrow because it's going from the liquid to my headspace as a gas. And then within that same system, one of the things about a terrarium, one of the things about, as I have it set up here, as it's closed, we will also have condensation. And what condensation is, is some of those gas particles will reform intermolecular bonds, lose some of their kinetic energy, and turn into their liquid state. Okay? So that's a down arrow. So we have evaporation, okay, and condensation in the kind of this closed system. And that's what I want to talk about. Um, when liquid um, goes from a liquid to being a gas, we call that evaporation. When water goes from being a gas to being a liquid, we call that condensation. And there's this there's this really neat concept called equilibrium. And equilibrium is kind of like a teeter-totter in that, um, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but basically we have things going this way, okay, kind of like we have liquid water going to form gas, doing what we call evaporation. And then we also have stuff going this way, which in the case what we're talking about now, we have gas going back to form a liquid, condensation. So that's an equal, and, and I guess I should say it's only at equilibrium if the rate in this case of um, evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. And on the next slide, you know that the rate of, evap of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation if the arrows are the same length to kind of indicate that. Okay. So our system is at equilibrium. Well, if our system is at equilibrium, then I kind of tur re turn your attention again to that headspace above my liquid. Okay. We say that the air up there then is, is saturated um, with regard to water vapor. It can't hold any more water vapor. Okay, So that's um, evaporation, condensation, equilibrium, and saturation kind of described in so many words. So I'll go ahead and I know if, you're, if you print off my slides you might need some words here. So I'll erase all the ink on the slide. Okay. So given amount of time in a closed system like that an equilibrium will be reached, right? Um, and the air will be what we call, the air in the headspace will be what we call saturated with regard to water vapor. So I think this is pretty cool. I think this is a neat figure. Um, so here we have, notice it says dry air. Here's our liquid water down here, okay? And notice this is cool. We've got a pressure gauge up here. Think of that pressure gauge as being selective for water vapor. And the way the pressure gauge goes is as it's deflected, that means it's increasing, um, in this case, the, the pressure exerted by water, water gas or water vapor is increasing as it's deflected. Okay, so you kind of, you kind of read these from left to right. So here we have dry air. After a certain amount of time, notice, and we can do this a couple different ways. One is to kind of like maybe put, put parafilm or something or some sort of saran wrap to, to remove the saran wrap. And what's going to happen is you're going to have some evaporation. Okay, notice though, and, and you're also going to have condensation. But I mentioned the length of the arrows. I don't know if you can see this, but the length of the evaporation arrow is longer than the length of the condensation arrow. Okay. 
So notice, uh, and we're going to talk about temperature. Temperature plays a role in kind of how your equilibrium is going to finally, finally settle. Notice that we're holding steadfast at 20 degrees Celsius. And as I mentioned, look at the uh, pressure gauge. That is, again, just selective for these cute little water molecules in their gaseous phase. So those cute little water vapors are <clears throat> making that gas, that pressure gauge move. Okay, so you let even more time go by, and eventually the rate of evaporation okay, will be equal to the rate of condensation. So here, finally, we say that this system is at equilibrium. All right, and not only that, Pitt, can you see where we've got more water vapor, more water um, in its gaseous state, and can you see where we finally, or I should say, we have the, the needle deflected even more, the gauge that's showing the, the water pressure in there. Okay, so another thing, uh, and I have some terms to kind of list down, down here with regard to when we talk about a system at equilibrium, but notice that the air we say is saturated with regard to water vapor, okay, um, water gas. You can't hold, I know the air doesn't hold it, but that, that parcel of air will not allow, um, and it does sometimes, but there should not be any more water vapor necessarily allowed there. With that said though, I want you to know this is a dynamic process. I just think that is so cool. So it's kind of swapped out. It's not to say that when you're at equilibrium, nothing ever changes because it does. You continue to have evaporation, uh, liquid going to its gas phase, and you continue to have condensation, gas going to its liquid phase. It's just that it's equal, one part per one part. So some important features about what I just described here. It's a great kind of look at um, the process of what we call um, air becoming saturated. You guys probably know what evaporation means, liquid going to a gas. What does condensation mean? Gas going back to a liquid. Okay, Vapor pressure, that think of kind of that little gauge up there being selective for water, gas particles. Um, and we kind of max out at vapor pressure when we're at equilibrium, when the air becomes saturated. And that would be the saturation vapor pressure of the water.